Hello everyone, and welcome to my The Bold and the Beautiful official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Thomas unexpectedly appears to Spencer's offices and shocked Liam. Thomas claims he's come to discuss hope. Liam advises him that he should go. Thomas knows Liam would never forgive him, but he must attempt to forgive hope. Thomas, according to Liam, is not the right person to pitch this to him, and his chats with Hope are none of his business. Liam reveals he and Hope chatted and that they still love one other. But it's not that simple. Thomas informs Liam that he has made mistakes in the past with Hope and that she has always forgiven him. Hope knew there was only one thing he couldn't forgive, and she chose it, according to Liam. Thomas calls Liam a fool, which he is convinced he will regret. Brooke tells Hope at Forrester Creations that she can't believe Liam won't forgive her. Hope sobs because she tried one more time to save her marriage, but Liam can't get over what occurred with Thomas. Brooke claims Liam has harmed her enough, and he is merely aware of the kiss. Hope says that he is only aware of the kiss, and he cannot even forgive her for it. Brooke can tell she's in pain and angry at Liam. Hope is also upset with herself because she brought this on herself. Brooke claims she made a mistake and must now move on, and she has the support of her family. Hope isn't sure she deserves it, but Brooke assures her that she will always be worthy of her mother's love. She does, however, advise Hope not to return to Thomas. Hope claims to have feelings for Thomas and has informed him that she intends to try to mend her marriage. She claims Thomas moved aside because he adores her. Brooke warns her that Thomas' love has brought her a lot of heartache. Steffi embraces her father in another office, saying she needed it. She misses Finn and her home, but Ridge insists she's safe at Grandad's. Eric loves her, he says, but he's not sure how he feels about him right now. Ridge believes he offended him when he threw out his stapler. Ridge observes that Eric does not want anyone to use his office and that he wishes to design again. Ridge switches the subject to Thomas and inquires about his relationship with Hope. She has no idea, but she is pulling for Liam and Hope. Ridge does not want Thomas to be with Hope again, since he becomes obsessed with her. Steffi believes that they need Hope and Liam to reconcile, but that this may not happen. Brooke arrives and informs them both that Hope sought Liam for forgiveness and that he declined. Brooke is concerned that Hope is in a vulnerable position. When Thomas arrives in Hope's workplace, he apologizes ahead of time. He admits that he went to meet Liam to persuade him of what he was about to lose, but it turns out that Liam is an even larger idiot than he feared. He insists he merely wanted to persuade him that she truly wants to reassemble their family, but he refuses. Thomas is perplexed because Liam is unaware of anything else occurred between them. He says he'd never tell Liam about it because it's between them. Thomas is aware that he has committed mistakes, but he loves her, and the kiss they shared in Rome ignited a fire within him. He wishes to adore her, to make things for her, and to make love to her. He claims that this is their time, and they should not waste it. They kiss fiercely, and hope stares into his eyes. Eric tries to sketch at the Forrester mansion, but his hand cramps, and he has tremors. He eventually drops his pencil, RG arrives to grab his charger and notices Eric is acting strangely. He inquires if everything is all right, and Eric responds that it is not. Eric assures him that he has nothing to worry about, which worries RG even more. Eric claims to be having a horrible day because of his father. Eric explains that he's been inspired and wants to create an entirely new collection, but Ridge believes he should be playing golf or pickleball instead. R.G. feels his father is mad for asking him to resign. Eric claims that this will be the largest gathering he's ever done, and he intends to assist him. R.G. does not believe he requires Eric's assistance, but Eric claims he does. Eric claims that he can't hold a pencil for very long and that it hurts after a time. R.G. inquires if he has seen a doctor. Eric claims to have it and claims it's arthritis. He claims he begged his father for assistance, but he is too preoccupied with other matters. Eric is determined to make this his best collection yet. He wants RG to assist him, but instructs him not to tell his father. 
Eric needs RJ's discretion, next on the bold and the beautiful, and Ridge and Brooke pay a visit to Sheila and Deacon. Ridge and Carter pound on Deacon's door, and Ridge cries, Open up. Where has Shayla gone? Deacon yells that he's getting dressed and that he needs a second. He buttons his shirt, and Shayla takes her belongings and exits the room. They burst in hunting for Shayla as Deacon unlocks the door. Deacon inquires as to why they are questioning him. Ridge claims he has assisted them in finding her and that he could do so again. Ridge believes Deacon knows where she is. Deacon maintains he hasn't seen her, and there's no way he can keep her here. Ridge inquires once more, does he know where Shayla is? Deacon denies it once more. Carter feels there may have been cameras around here that filmed Shayla, and Deacon says that's a fine idea because he's not here 24 hours a day, but he doubts they'll get a court order now that Shayla is free. Ridge claims he appears to be defending her. Deacon swears he doesn't want to see Shayla again because she's wounded them all, but if he does, he'll tell him. Ridge is skeptical, and he claims that Shayla, as well as everyone who assists Shayla, is a threat to his family, which includes Brooke and Hope. Ridge and Carter walk out, and Shayla emerges from the other room. She enjoyed Deacon's performance and thanks him. She is aware that some of what he stated is true, and she has made life tough for him. She says he means so much to her, because no one else cares if she lives or dies but him and Finn. She mentions his connection to Hope and claims she has one with Finn. She swears not to disrupt Deacon's life and vows to stay in Finn's life forever. She's confident he'll accept her as his mother. Finn brings a brown paper bag to Steffi's office at Forrester Creations. He asks her to guess what it is when she asks what it is. She's not in the mood, but he wants to play a game in which he gives her hints on what it isn't and clues on what it is. She eventually realizes it's the hidden Raymond truck's special Raymond. He informs her that he has missed her, and Steffi expresses her gratitude for the surprise. Steffi pauses to dine with Finn. Finn understands why she felt compelled to take the kids to her grandfather's, and he is well aware that he has blamed Liam for their separation. He still feels Liam wants her back, but he also accepts blame for their separation and realizes it is due to Shayla. Steffi sobs, saying she still has dreams about Sheila and worries about the kids. Finn agrees, which is why he'll go to any length to keep them safe from Sheila. Steffi thanks him for coming to see her and for opening up to her. She can tell he adores her and the children. However, given how much Sheila has terrified them, it is still difficult for her. Finn understands and swears to avoid Sheila because being apart from her is killing him. They kiss because she feels the same way. Finn pledges that no one can keep them apart, that he is hers, forever. Eric and RG continue to sketch in the Forrester estate. Eric becomes frustrated and attempts to demonstrate to RG what he requires of him, but his hand refuses to respond when he takes the pencil. He claims that unless RG can assist him, his career is over. RG inquires if Eric has informed Donna of his arthritis, and Eric responds that he has. He thinks talking to her helps, and she attempts to convince him that things could be worse. RG asks Eric how long he's been battling with this, and Eric squeezes a therapy ball. Eric claims it hasn't been that long, but the discomfort has suddenly gotten worse, and it has interfered with his thinking. RG understands why he took a step back from Hoke for the future. Eric says that it is, and he tried to return to drawing after a hiatus, but it is now worse than before. He saw a doctor, but there isn't much he can do. He reveals that was when he went to Ridge seeking assistance with a new line, but didn't inform him about his illness. Ridge, however, stated that he was too busy, so he went to RG. Eric reveals that design is all he's ever done, and it's given him more accomplishment and satisfaction than anything else. With that gift gone, he is unable to express himself without RJ's assistance. RG informs his grandfather that he can still draw and create on a computer. RJ claims he can demonstrate how. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.